Welcome to Open for Business, the Gallatin Valley's only local business and consumer talk show featuring Tom Eaglehawk, the Man Entrepreneur Magazine radio called the leading authority in the United States for doing business in small town. Here he is, speaker, author, small business consultant, and Mrs. Eaglehawk's favorite son, Tom Eaglehawk. All right, welcome everyone. Open for business. We air every uh, Saturday live from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mountain Time on AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston, Montana. If you'd like to be a part of the big broadcast, go to KMMSAM.com and click Listen Live. The call in number during the show, 406 522 Talk, 406 522 8255. I'm here, you're here. Let's get the show on the road. Let's get back to Open for Business on News Radio AM 1450 KMMS Bozeman. Lines are open at 522 Talk. That's 522 8255. Here he is. He's big, he's bad, and he's open for business. Tom Eaglehoff. Hi, right, welcome back, everyone. It is 25 minutes before the top of the hour. It's Saturday, June 3rd, 2017. It is uh, 72 degrees outside. A beautiful day in downtown Bozeman, Montana. I want to Welcome you to the podcast portion of Open for Business. Each week I share some tips and tricks I've learned over the years about advertising, marketing, promotion, and building strong, successful businesses. And if you missed any of my previous podcasts, you'll find them all on my YouTube channel. And while you're here, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel? And you'll never miss another weekly podcast. You'll also find a link to my podcast on my 400-page website that 3,000 people visit every day at smalltownmarketing.com. That's smalltownmarketing.com. And today's topic, I want to talk about direct mail, why it works, how to use it. Suppose you're a real estate agent, uh, or you could be a financial planner too. Uh, And every morning when you walk in your office, sitting there on your desk would be a list of people ready to buy a house that day. They qualified for the credit, had the down payment, and were ready to buy. All you need to do is show them your listings. Would that make your life easier? What would a list like that be worth to you? But in reality, that's sort of how direct mail works. Now, as far as I know, no such list like that exists, but what you do have is a direct mail list that will tell you, based on past history, surveys, industry studies, and collected information, a profile of the people most likely to purchase a home today. Now, the most likely home buyer might be X years old, is married, has X children, makes X dollars a year, has X years of education, favorite pastime is X, hobby is X, favorite car is X, and so on. So what about that junk mail you get? We all get junk mail. Don't you love it? Junk mail. All that unwanted mail that fills your mailbox day after day that you have to sort through to get to the real mail, the bills. Do you ever stop to wonder, how did I end up on this mailing list? Why are they sending this stuff to me? Why? Because you fit the profile of the person most likely to purchase the product based on your past purchasing experiences. So does your neighbor receive the same junk mail you do? Well, except for publishers clearinghouse mailing, probably not. Well, why not? Because you're different from your neighbor. You have a different model car, different clothes, different hobbies, different interests. They may receive mailings on outdoor products and you receive mailings on books and indoor hobbies. They play golf while you hunt and fish. You like beer, they like wine. So how do you end up on mailing lists? Well, the three most popular ways of getting on mailing lists are, one, using a credit card to purchase something, two, filling out a warranty card when you buy a new product, or three, Uh, you subscribe to a specific magazine. Now, do you happen to have an American Express card? Well, American Express allegedly keeps 450 pieces of information on each card holder. Each time the card is processed, you decide by your purchases which sales offers will be included in your next bill. Direct mail's major business. More money is spent each year on direct mail than any other media. Why? Because it works. So how does it compare with other advertising? Well, let's suppose that one of the magazines your target market reads is Time Magazine. I know as a small town business, you're probably not going to advertise in Time, but humor me to make this point. You want to place a full page ad in Time, the cost is about $75,000. 
let's say for this exercise that Time has half a million subscribers. So our message is going to reach 500,000 people, right? Well, it won't reach the people who just read a portion of the magazine that doesn't include our ad. It won't reach the people who go right past our ad looking for something else. And I also said that Time is one of the magazines your target market reads. So actually, our demographics only fall within a proportional cross-section of the Time readership. Our target market might be ages 18 to 45, but Time's age demographic might be 18 to 65. Technically, your target market's in there, but that's only a portion of the overall demographic of the magazine. You're wasting your advertising investment by reaching people between the ages of 46 and 65. They're not your customers. And last but not least, your ad is there with all your competitors. So why does direct mail work? Well, it's efficient and it's cost effective. If your research and profile of your target market is correct, you've eliminated contact with unqualified customers. Huh? What does that mean? Well, each time you refine your mailing list, you eliminate more and more non-customers. Every non-customer you eliminate lowers the cost of the mailing. For example, my target market is left-handed Italian males who live in towns of less than 9,714 people. They live in two-story houses on the south side of the street. They own female Clydesdale horses and are married to women named Inga. Now, does this list eliminate most of the population? Yeah, it does. So why would I want to spend a ton of money on conventional advertising hoping I would reach this small market segment? So if I want to reach homeowners, why would I waste money advertising to renters? Don't you do this now with your current ads on radio and in the newspaper? Are there radio stations renters aren't allowed to listen to that I could advertise on? Any newspapers out there renters aren't allowed to read? The more I know about my customer, the easier they are to reach and sell. The more non-customers I can eliminate from my list, the lower my advertising cost becomes. And the more successful I will be in developing qualified leads for my business. So why does direct mail work in small towns? Well, this is really a no-brainer. Direct mail becomes an effective weapon in towns of 50,000 or less. In fact, the smaller the better. In a town of 50,000, how many potential customers do you have? Let's say 20% for this exercise. The other 80% are the wrong age, uh, don't need your product, deal with your competitor, or don't buy from you for a variety of reasons. It's the old 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your business comes from 20% of your customers. So 20% of 50,000 by advanced calculus would be 10,000 potential customers. Do you mail to all 10,000? No, you don't. These are only potential customers. How many fit the exact profile of your ideal customer? Your ideal customer would be people who buy from you now and keep you in business. Now it may be 8,000 or it may only be a few hundred, but whatever the number, that's the target market that gets your offer in the mail. Now if you're a regular listener, you've heard me say many times the purpose of any ad is to either promote name recognition of the business or to create a call to action. By a call to action, I mean bring in a coupon, make a call, come down to the business, etc. My favorite way of doing this in small towns is with postcards. Give the customer a reason to keep the postcard, a drawing, a valuable coupon, or some other reason to keep it. So here's some reasons why I like small town postcards so much. Everybody looks at them, but you only have about three seconds to make your point. They're a miniature billboard. They make perfect coupons. People who would never think of picking up a letter off your desk think nothing of picking up a postcard and reading it. Your message is, is exposed to many people as it travels through the mail and around the office. At current pricing, postcards are slightly more than bulk mail and can go either first class or bulk mail. At current postcard pricing, you can do small specialized mailings without having to qualify for bulk mail. No pre-sorting or bundling needed. Black and white postcards on colored cardstock are inexpensive to produce. Mail 500 or more with pre-sorted barcoding and nine digit zip code and the postage can go down to the lowest possible rate. Check with your post office for exact pricing and restrictions in your area. Add address correction requested to your return address 
and undelivered first class mail will be returned by the post office with the new address updated for free. Even with printing and postage costs, direct mail can often be less than newspapers and on our radio. The main thing to remember about any advertising is nothing works in every situation. Direct mail is not the answer to all advertising problems and may not be the best option for your particular business. Compare costs and possible effectiveness for all types of advertising. Advertising is always a test. And last but not least, be sure you follow my first rule of advertising. And that rule is this. Never advertise anywhere unless there's at least a 75% expectation that the ad will produce more in business revenue than it costs. Advertising must always be an investment. It can never, ever be an expense. It must not only pay for itself, but it must also produce a profit. So whatever advertising medium meets my rule, that's the one you should be using. And that's the podcast. If you missed any of my previous podcasts, you'll find them all on the YouTube channel. And while you're here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll also find a link to my podcast on my 400-page website that 3,000 people visit every day at smalltownmarketing.com. That's smalltownmarketing.com. So tune in each Saturday, and let's build successful businesses together.